Hello, this is Scotty McCoy. I'm the author of the Ultimate Friday the 13th trivia book, and I am doing another book titled The Ultimate Slasher Movie Encyclopedia, and I am interviewing the cast and crew of the Friday the 13th franchise. And I currently have on the phone with me uh, Christy Angus, and she played uh, Adrian and Jason X. Hi, Christy. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. Um, so I have a couple questions for you. The first one I have is um, not related to Friday the 13th. It's uh, how did you get your start into acting? Um, it was, um, I'm just trying to think, it's a tiny bit of a long story. I actually, um, I went to university many, many years ago, and I did a Bachelor of Science, um, because I wanted to go into the medical field, and when I finished it, I was sick of school, and I decided, I thought, oh, I don't think I want to do this, so I was leaving university, and a woman approached me, she was there at the university, and it turns out she was a modeling agent, and she asked me if I would be interested in coming down and meeting her, and if I wanted to travel, and, you know, if I'd be interested in modeling, which I had never, ever considered. I thought it was, um, I was flattered, but I thought it was a, a, a funny concept. And um, so I met with her, and it just so happened that there was an agency there from Japan, and an agency from Korea that were interested, so I ended up going away. Um, for the summer, and then I came back to Vancouver, where I was living at the time, and then I ended up traveling for three years, um, modeling in Europe, and um, all over, you know, Spain, Greece, Italy, and then when I came back, I thought I was, I went back to school for a bit, because I thought I was going to still continue on, and um, my agent said that she thought I would think, she thought that commercials would be a good idea. So I tried out for commercials and I started getting them and then she encouraged me to take acting classes. So it was actually th thanks to her because I didn't really think about becoming an actress at the time and she kind of kept nudging me, nudging me, nudging me and um, yeah, and then I eventually just started getting parts. Awesome. So yeah. That's awesome. It was, uh, <laughs> it was interesting, but no, I, I definitely wasn't born ready to become an actress. <laughs> something that I thought, I mean, I, I liked performing and goofing around and stuff as a kid, but I, yeah. it, I def, it definitely wasn't, um, uh, you know, right. a desire from early, early, early on. So. Right. So what was the best part about filming Jason X and what was the worst? Hmm. The best part was probably the, the crew. Um, Everybody was awesome. Makeup artist, um, you know, Sean, like all the, you know, the director was awesome. Kane was so kind. He was, uh, you know, I was still, I had done a few things, but I think I was still kind of new. So it was just fun being on set and everybody was really friendly and, um, uh, I, they spent a week before I even started shooting in the makeup room and they, they did a full body cast of me and they did a full head cast. And um, so that was cool. Though the, Probably the least favorite part was when they put the head cast on and I had to be in it for 20 minutes and Ooh. they fill up your ears and your eyes and it's like complete silence, <sighs> like a sensory deprivation chamber, yeah. um, which is if you're claustropho claustrophobic, it would be, I think really um difficult for certain people right. and um so that was probably i mean if you want to call it the worst it was still really cool like and it was cool right. to see my head and like they've done all these they painted it all and they added you know um real eyelashes and real hair <laughs> and everything so there's 10 heads lined up that they oh used God. in the filming and um so that was all really really cool and the other thing that was only unfortunate was when we did the stunt of um, Kane throwing me against the window, I had a little bouncy board that I was jumping off of and throwing myself against the window because I wanted to do it myself. And um, I didn't realize because my adrenaline was going so much, but I kept hitting my thighs over and over and over again. And I didn't even notice it until at the end of the day when I went and took off my, uh, my wardrobe. I had massive, like all my legs were black and blue, Ooh. so bad that I could barely get my pants on and I had to ice my legs for about four days afterwards. Oh my I'd... god. Yeah, but I mean, it's no, it, 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 it 
it's not that big of a deal. But at the time, I was I looked down, I went, oh my god, I didn't even feel this because you know you're just excited about shooting the scene. Right. So. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, what was your most memorable moment while filming Jason X? I think the most memorable was how Kane, how he approached the character and how he would kind of creep us out um, <laughs> in the sense of he'd be sitting there chatting before the scene and he's super nice guy, super generous, and we run the scene and even though Jason doesn't talk to you, you know, like we'd kind of talk about what's going to happen in the scene and we would talk about how to, you know, just what we were going to do and everything. And then like five minutes or 10 minutes before we'd go in, he just stopped talking to you right. and he'd get really creepy and weird and like would just get up and physically just, it was just, he, he did this on purpose, which I found out <laughs> afterwards, just to make you really, really uncomfortable. Right. Um, which is good, because he didn't want you to go into the scene thinking of him as Kane. He wanted you to think of him as right. Jason. I, and, and uh, sorry, go on. I was going to say, I, I didn't know if you um if you heard the story when he was filming uh, Friday the 13th Part 7. It was the first time he played Jason, and he, they were when they were shooting it, um, he was in the woods, and they were not on camera at the time, but he was still in all full gear and everything. And I, I guess one of the kids noticed they were filming, and he came, was some kid like kid in the neighborhood came up to him, and he goes, "Are you uh, filming Friday the 13th as Jason?" And he just looks at him with this like just looking at him, you know, as Jason menacing and everything, and he goes you are, aren't you? And he just stares at him and he goes at, he like goes to lunge at him and the kid ran and he tripped over, like tripped over. He said he felt like it was, he, that kid was part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't hear that story, but that's a great story. Yeah, well, and that's exactly what he would do. Like he yeah. would just become really creepy and really weird. <laughs> and you'd be thinking, I know this is a movie, but I'm kind of a little bit disturbed right now. So <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, good for him to be that way for sure because yes it made a difference so. <laughs> so what was your audition like for jason x um my first audition was actually for km i oh. went in for her and um i i also like i mean that was uh, that was quite a bit bigger part and um mm-hmm. lisa was awesome as cam and she should have been cam but so mm-hmm. when i first went in i read for that and i I had to do like improv a few things and I just wasn't really prepared and I just kind of felt strange about the whole audition. But um, when I left, my agent called me afterwards and um, she said, oh, they, they actually don't think you're right for KM, but they want to have you come back for another character. And they said that they're going to give you a few more, like a few days to go over it and, you know, Mm-hmm. read more and learn the lines better because when I got the audition for Kane it was really really fast like I think it was the night late the night before and I had been working or something and I just got these lines that I was trying to learn and I didn't really know them that well and then I kind of had to I had like a 9 a.m audition right. so yeah so then I went in and um everybody was in there so which is great because when you go for auditions now, most of the time the director's not even there. They just put you on tape. But everybody was in the room, and they just watched me through it. And um, once again, you know, like sometimes you go in and directors and producers kind of don't really give you anything, and they don't – they just kind of look at you, and <laughs> you leave going, did I do a good job, or do you want me to try something different? And it's always nice to get some kind of feedback, even right. if it's a bad audition. I'd rather them say – well, you need to do it again, or that was terrible, and and whatever. But right. um, everybody was really kind and helpful and encouraging, and uh, yeah, it was a, it was a great audition. That's good. It was fun. Awesome. So, how was uh, James Isaac as a director? Pardon me. How was uh, James Isaac as a director? Oh, he was awesome. He was. Uh, yeah, he was just. I felt like he was as enthusiastic about the movie as all of the actors were as well, you know, right. like he really wanted to be a part of it and, and he wasn't, um, he was just happy and friendly and encouraging and, uh, you know, sometimes you're on set and yeah. directors, they're kind of just like plugging away because maybe they don't like the project, but <laughs> I felt like it was something that he was happy to be doing and was excited. That's cool. Um, you know, just because it, you know, even though it's a horror movie, it's, 
he was looking at it as, you know, this is fun. Lots of people mm-hmm. love this franchise. So we're just going to be really campy mm-hmm. and goofy and have right. a great time. And, um, yeah. So it was nice. So, uh, what was it like working with Yanni Gilman and Melody Johnson? Um, I only, I didn't, I just did that one scene with them, and yeah. we didn't. I didn't really hang out with them that much or get to know them that well. But I think part of it too is because I was supposed to be a little bit older and kind of like annoyed with them. Yeah, I thought it would be better that I didn't mm-hmm. become, you know, like on set and joke around and become right. best buds with them. So, you know, I, I wanted to kind of have that um, authoritative kind of teacher role, Yeah. if that makes any sense. It does, because I know um, yeah. I interviewed Ted White. He played uh, Jason in part four, and he um, said this. He, he did the same thing with the entire cast. He couldn't be around them because if he got too chummy with them, he would feel like his character, like they would know, know him as a really nice guy, and he's really supposed to be. They're supposed to be terrified of him. So he yeah, wants to stay yeah, in, in mean, character. Yeah, they didn't need to be terrified of me, but right. I felt like you know I was supposed to be like this science nerd and you know everybody else is young and making out and stuff and I was all I cared about was like dissecting Jason so I just kind of wanted to come across as that kind of right you know that character so I yeah I just kind of I guess did a bit of method I actually interviewed Melody on a uh, Monday Oh, okay. So I'm excited to interview her too, and uh, I think I interv- I t- spoke to Yanni's agent, but uh, he said he was gonna get back to me, and I didn't hear back yet from him. Mm. Yeah. So uh, how well, is your I'll, I'll, huh? Yeah. I said, well, hopefully you do get to hear back from everybody, because that would be nice for that, you to have um, that you know be. as many interviews as possible. Definitely. So uh, how was your death scene filmed? Um, it was really really cool. So. They had, we did it in stages. Um, there's the one where, you know, throwing me against the window and dragging me backwards. And Jason actually, or Kane, we talked about it. He grabbed me in a certain way so that I could actually be trying to punch him as hard as I could. But I, but we both knew that I wouldn't be able to punch him because my arm was being held up. Okay. So I was like getting this flailing backward punch that doesn't really hurt anybody, you know, right. but I was able to do it with the full force of my body. So it looked real, but I was struggling to get away with him. So we pl- kind of planned different ways that he could pin my arms or hold me. Um, and then, so we did, um, the first one was they had made a whole face mask of the frozen of the ice. It's supposed to like the liquid nitrogen that kind of, so they put my head into the sink and then we cut. Right. And when he pulled me back, that was still me. And they put this the, the frozen mask over my face. Mm-hmm. And I had to hold myself really, really still so that I looked like I was dead. <laughs> um, and then they cut to the full fake body and head with the face mask on. And they put these like fake eyes over top. And then that's when, and then he smashed that whole thing into the counter. <laughs> um, but the meet my face breathing was in an aquarium. So they had the aquarium up high and then all the cameras and lights were underneath the aquarium. And um, so what they did is they had me go into the aquarium with my face quite a few times, scream and then hold my breath and just stay there as long as I could until like the bubble stopped. Right. So like you could, it looked like I had actually frozen. Um, and then they decided to, and then the, the difference of, uh, then they would, you know, pull me out of the sink. But then when it shows my face freezing in that, that was CGI. Okay. So that difference of like, so it goes, my face goes into the aquarium. And then I just hold it, hold it, hold it. And then they, for for as long as I possibly could, so that it gave them enough time in the editing to do all that, all of that. And then, yeah, then they put, pulled my body up and smashed it and threw it on the floor. <laughs> So when they smashed it on the counter, now was what was that? Was that CGI too, or was that just different masks all put together, filmed separately? Yeah, no, that was an actual head. Okay. They made a, they made a full cast of my head, and they actually put a fake brain inside my head, <laughs> um, so that when they smashed it, 
like I don't know all the stuff that they used because it's all the special effects guys. But that was an actual head that smashed and had like all the like they put fake blood in it and everything. Right. Wow. And yeah. That 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 scene is one of my is actually my favorite out of the entire franchise, and just hearing how it was made and everything just made it that much more special for me because I love that scene. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, it was a pretty interesting scene. I was. Um, I remember when the movie first came out. At the time, I was like, "This is a cool death," because you know you see just people right. stabbed and axes go through their head and stuff. But right. I thought that that was really cool. And then I think it was like a year or so later, my brother said i just i just heard that quentin tarantino saw that movie and he thought your death scene was like one of his favorites and i was like <laughs> yes yay quentin tarantino liked my death scene that's so. awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what was it like working with kane hodder i know you spoke about him a little bit yeah he was he was terrific guy um super kind mm -hmm. super polite very professional um lovely to talk to you know I don't have anything bad to say about him he That's was good. just uh you know he'd been in the business for quite a while and um right. I I think I mean I haven't seen him since it's been we I was going to actually do a um like a horror con with him that he was coming to Toronto right. and um, I thought oh this is great because it was going to be him and myself and maybe a couple other um people from the franchise and I thought it would be nice to have a reunion and see him and see how he's doing but um, it ended up that uh, yeah, I think he got booked on something else or he couldn't come so oh. I ended up uh, meeting up with him but right. so mm. uh, what was the environment like on set? It was it was a great set to work on I was I was there for I think it was like 14 days I wasn't there for the whole film because my part wasn't oh. as large as some of the other ones but right. Um, yeah, everybody was, um, the cool thing is, is Lexa and Lisa, I both ended up working with them a couple years later on a, on a TV series called Andromeda. Nice. And, uh, I remember going, I, I, I didn't, I didn't really watch the show at the time when I got the audition, then I got the part and then I showed up on set and I was like, oh, hello ladies. <laughs> nice to see you again. So it's all three of us That's from funny. Friday the 13th were all on a, on a like a star trek show but, right um yeah and they're both uh great great yeah. girls i really family. wanted to yeah, interview I've... lisa too but uh i wrote out to her and her she's not able to do it uh she's not uh taking any more interviews because she's i guess completely booked for some a lot of things right so, yeah she's probably busy doing all that sort of stuff yeah so. And the last yeah. question I got for you is um is about you basically uh do you have any future projects in the works that you'd like to tell the readers about well, <laughs> the unfortunate thing is, is I don't do acting anymore. I work as a midwife, so oh, nice. I deliver babies for okay. a living. Um, so I know that's boring because you guys <laughs> probably would be more interested in hearing about um, TV projects. But no, I worked up until a few years ago, did lots of Canadian you know, movies and TV and, okay. and stuff like that and enjoyed it. But, um, you know, just getting older. Yeah in this business and being a woman sometimes you know right I, and i felt like i maybe wanted to explore something else and so right. I so do you have like a website for being a midwife or a facebook page that i could promote for it i don't because it would be through my clinical practice and we don't um we don't like promote it okay that way like we do it where you just go online and and people can okay. read about the midwives and, and stuff like that. So okay. we do, and we don't really have like, a, just because it's like women coming into our care and being pregnant and stuff. So it's kind of not really like a right. social media thing. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, I, yeah, so no, I'm not, not doing any acting anymore. So, <laughs> Well, I think but I did it, have fun when I did it. So. Yeah, I bet. I, I always wanted to be an actor. I was one of those people that like to show off, and I still do. Like I, if on my Facebook page, I post vi random videos of me dancing and singing, and I dance and sing horribly, <laughs> and I just do it because I'm an enter I like to entertain. So, and everybody gets a kick out of it, and people are having bad days, and they tell me that I cheer them up. So it makes me feel good doing that as well. Oh, so <laughs> that's great. Well, yeah, well, I, that's 
that's what matters the most, as long as you're doing something that you enjoy. And exactly. I still go to the occasional um, horror, like Comic-Con and stuff like that. Right. Um, I haven't gone in a while, but if it works into my schedule and I get contacted by my um, managers, then right. I will go. But um, I'm sure that you guys, horror people, are kind of in the know of that sort of stuff. Yeah. So if anybody, um, uh, if I'm ever going to one then I can always email you too and let you know if I'm ever going to win and you can. That would be great. And I would love to come, like come see you. That would yeah, be awesome. that would be terrific. Awesome. Well, I thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for giving me a call and I hope everything goes really well. Not with a problem. You and your book so. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye. You too. Take yep. care. Bye. Bye.